Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you a very useful widget from CrocoBlock called Dropbar. This widget will give the user the ability to hover or click on an object like a button or an image to see additional content. Here are some examples they have on their website. So if you hover over any of these, you can see that different content will get displayed in different locations per button. So if you go down here, this one you can click and it will show a contact form or this one you can hover, show a contact form. And then they give you the ability to change how uh, wide these things are. And then there's some ones that you can just add, you know, animations. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three different examples that I was able to come up when using this widget. The first example I'm gonna show you is a simple drop bar with just some image and a text. So when I hover over this, I just have our image and just a little bit of text right here. So you can see when you hover, it's got these two things right here. The next two examples will require Elementor Pro. And in example two, I'm gonna show you how I was able to add this Lottie animation. So when the user hovers over this, you can have something like a special promo code or something like that. So this is, gives it a lot more um, fun, interactive kind of element. The next one is going to be a very useful one and that's gonna be how you can display a contact form when you hover over a button like this. So like I said, these two are gonna require Elementor Pro. This first one will not. Before you continue, make sure that you have purchased this plugin right here from CrocoBlock called Jet Elements. And as you can see, it's $24 a year if you have one website. If you go under pricing, uh, you can, if you know you're gonna buy other CrocoBlock plugins, it makes more sense to go ahead and purchase something like this where you can get access to everything. So in most cases, you're gonna to wanna to probably just have multiple plugins, because as you can see with CrocoBlock, they have a lot of different things. So if you know you're gonna use it, you might as well just purchase more than just the one plugin. Here we are on the back end of an Elementor website, and I've already have these activated, so I can go ahead and walk you through how I was able to set each one of these up. So like I said, after you have installed and activated the Jet Elements plugin, if you just go ahead and you can do a search for drop bar, you're gonna see this is the new widget you're gonna have right here. You just click and drag that in, and that's what I've done right here. So let's go ahead and show you what I did on the first example. The first thing you need to do is under button type, and you can see right here, they give you two different options, text and image. So text is basically gonna be a button, and an image is gonna be an image. So this one right here is an image, and these two are just the standard text. The next line is, what do you want inside the button? So in this case, I just called it simple editor. And if you want, you can add an icon before or after the text. So in this example, I have it over here where I have it before. And what you can do is figure out where you want this to be aligned. You can do left, center, right, and then if you wanna fill up the whole thing, you can do that. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna center all of these moving forward. Now, this is the next section where, pretty much this is how you're gonna manipulate what's inside of this pop-up right here. So they have three different options, simple text, which is just gonna really just be text. You can't add any HTML um, images or anything like that. You might be able to, I haven't tested that, but if you're gonna use HTML, what I recommend is using this right here. So this is the, um, what you see is what you get editor. And in this case, what I did is I just went ahead and dropped in an image right here. I just went to add media added an image that was already in my media library and just some simple text right here. So as you can see, that's how I was able to make that come up. So that covers everything under this section right here. Now the next section is where do you want this positioned? So in this case, I have it top center. So it's gonna be at the top and the center. So if you go ahead and move, let's say top left, it's gonna move it to the top and the left here. You got top right where it's gonna look more to the right. So definitely wanna play around with how you want this positioned and always be mindful if these things start to go off the page, you might have some issues with scrolling. So I'm gonna cover that later in this tutorial. And then underneath mode, they gave you two different options. We got hover and click. So in this case, you just have it on hover or if you want the user to click, you can do that. And the hide delay is how long it will take for that pop-up to uh, fade away after a while. So I just have it at nothing, so it just goes away instantly. So if I'm, you know, if I move my mouse, it goes away. But let's say if I want to make this like one second, you can add a thousand milliseconds. So you can see one disappear. So it depends on what you want. I'm going to remove that right here. 
And then they give you a cool effect where you can have it do a different type of animation. So in this case, I have zoom in, you can do fade, you know, they give you some cool ones in here. So if I change that to like fall perspective, you could see it kind of like grows up. So that's a pretty cool one. I'll keep that right there. Offset is how far do you want this to be offset from the button itself or the image. So you can see right here, it's 45 pixels. So it depends on what you want. But if you go really far, that's going to be a little weird if you have that much of a gap. So maybe a simple like 10 might work in a lot of cases where it just kind of bumps up a little bit. And then this is pretty cool. They give you the option to change how wide you want these things. And so you can go by pixels or percentage. So you can see right here, I have it at 300 pixels. So this is 300 pixels wide. So if I change that to 600, it should be double that width. So you can see right here is at 600 pixels. Now, what I did notice is the percentage is a little confusing because what it is, is it's a percentage width of the widget itself. So it's not like the width of the whole container. So if I go ahead and add a hundred percent, it's only going to fill up a hundred percent of the width of this uh, button or this image. So the only way to kind of make that work would be if you wanted the full width of that container, you'd have to go over here to justify. And then now you can see it's going to be the width of the whole button. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to start using percentages, you need to make sure that you understand is the width of the button itself. So let's go back into pixels and 300 was kind of like a good number right here. Now they do give you this option right here and this is going to override pretty much everything else. If you activate this, this is fixed layout. So this can be, you can have these buttons or images floating on the website anywhere. So if you have like a chat bot or something, you know, if you want to have something that's always on the page, that's what this section is right here. And you can see they give you different options. You can choose top center if you want to have it up here. So you got to really be careful if you're going to use this fixed layout to make sure that you don't have any issues with overlapping or anything like that. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to switch these off on all three of these. And that covers the functionality of the button itself. So if you go underneath style, this is pretty standard Elementor stuff where you have the different um, styles for your typography for your button. So we have uh, blue background, we got the text color to white. You could do a box shadow if you want. So that just covers the basic styling of the button itself. So if you go down underneath content, this is where you're going to be able to change things like the background color and how you want it aligned. So you can see right here, typography, I have it set to just the default. So if you look right here, I can increase that text if I wanted. So if I go to like much bigger, it's going to look way out of whack. So let me just reset that back to the normal. And you can see it's right back to normal. And if you do the alignment, this is how it's going to be aligned within here. So if you have text, you can see that it is going to now be manipulated by this alignment right here. And then you can just do a gradient background classic. So in this case, I have like this tan color. So you can see right here, text color, you know, it's kind of standard stuff. Um, this is a pretty cool feature you might want to enable if you want to have it where it pops out even more. So as you can see right here, I have it at vertical nine and 15 and it just kind of pops a lot more. So I'm just going to keep that on because that's a pretty cool feature. And then they give you the uh, ability to change your Z index. If you know you're going to have these things uh, on top of other things, you can manipulate that number right here. So you can just go ahead, hit update, and let's view this on the front end, make sure everything's working. You can see right here, if I hover over this, we got the drop shadow now, this text is aligned, everything is looking good right here. Now I'm gonna show you a really cool one that I was able to do where when the user hovers over this icon, we have this little Lottie animation come up with a promo code. So the way this works is, let me go back into this widget and I won't go through each one of these settings because it's all basically the same. The one thing you do need to change is underneath content, we want to make sure that this one right here called template is activated. So what you need to do first is create the template for this uh, Lottie animation. So I already did that right over here. So if you go into the template, you can see I just have a simple widget. And what I would recommend is make sure that the width of the section kind of corresponds with how wide you want it here. It's going to make it a little bit easier if you change the width here rather than inside the widget itself right here. 
So if you see right here, we just have a simple uh, Lottie animation where I just dragged in a JSON file. And if you're not too familiar with Lottie animations, we have other videos uh, about Lottie animations. I'll leave it up here in the card and I'll also leave a link in the description below. But you could just go to a free website like LottieFiles.com, do a search for something like discount. And if you like something like this, you would just go here, download, and then this Lottie JSON file. So that will download this file right here to your desktop. And then what you do is just upload it to WordPress and then you can just use it right here. So once you do that, you could see, you could change the alignment right here. So in this case, we just want it centered and you can add other things below it, like a heading or some text. But in this case, you could do a custom caption. So if you look right underneath here, usually by default, this is set to none. But I went ahead and added custom, and then you can just say something like promo code 25 off. So you can kind of add this throughout your website, you know, almost like a hidden feature. So if the user hovers over it, they get like a special deal. So you can make it like it's an exclusive thing, you know, it's something a little more fun. So in this case, like I said, just have 25 off. And then depending on how you want to have your animation set up, um, I just have it set to an infinite loop. So it always kind of keeps going. So you can go underneath loop and I remove uh, where it says times, just remove that. And then depending on how fast or slow you want it, you can change the speed, when it starts, when it ends. So this is always going to be dependent on how the Lottie animation was created. You can just change those settings right here. So once everything looks good there, you can just go ahead and hit update on your template file. And now within the template settings right here, you click on template and I call this one 25 off. So once you start typing, that will come up right here. And what I like is you could see they have this button right here. You can just click this edit button or this pencil and that just brought you into this right here. So if you do need to make edits to your template, you can go ahead and just do that right within the editor. And instead of clicking, uh, like I said, at the first one, we had it underneath text for the button type. We just went ahead and I added um, an icon I found, um, something like an icon scout. You just add that in right here. You can change the thumbnail size, but if you're using it like an SVG, uh, this won't really matter because it will scale up correctly. And everything else underneath uh, settings is pretty much the same. So in this case, I have the bottom center for the position, mode, hover, you know, slide up, just play around, figure out what looks good right here. So if you remember, I added 500 pixel width in the template file, I have that the same right here. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this matches up to the width of the template. It just makes it a lot easier. And if you notice when you hover over this icon, I have it going up and down. If you want that type of effect, you can go underneath the button settings, hover and hover animation pulse. So just adds a little more uh, fun to an animation to your website. So you can add that. if if you want and then underneath content pretty much you know everything is kind of just standard stuff so that's how you do a lottie animation with a template and this last one is very similar to how we set up the lottie animation what we did on this last one was uh, same thing we have a template and then we just have it called contact form so I have that open right here and as you could see we just have a regular section let me get to the section we have it at 600 pixels wide and we just have a simple contact form I didn't do much you know customizations or anything like that for this tutorial so it's just a regular contact form 600 pixels wide as a template and then what you do is you just you know enable the template right here under contact form I chose the template and you could see right here that it's at the 600 pixels so if we go into here we actually need to change that to 600 and you can see that's the width, which is 600. And pretty much if everything else is exactly the same, if you need to go ahead and change the background color of that content, you could just do that right here. And then, you know, just if you want to have a box shadow, you know, the, everything else I've already covered in here. Now, I did say in the beginning of the tutorial, you need to be mindful of if these things are gonna start to go outside of your main section, you're gonna run into some issues. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead on mobile and let's make this contact form really wide. So as you can see right here, I made the contact form um, underneath content, settings, I have it at 266. So let's go ahead and say if I kept that at like the 600 pixels. Now you're gonna see, this is how it's actually gonna look on a mobile device. And of course, if you are using a hover mode on mobile, 
you can't hover with your fingers. So the user is going to have to click on the button to have this come up. So you can see right here, this is a mess. So you can see that it adds this big uh, horizontal scroll bar. And that's because this is going outside the container width right here. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever the width of your breakpoint is. So in this case, you can see my mouse is, is 360. You're going to want to make sure that you're always below that number. So let me go to something like a 340 just to make sure that it doesn't go outside the container. And I would even add a little bit more because there's always like padding and things like that you need to consider. Um, the, it looks like the you can see right here the reason why you still have the scroll bar is that box shadow. So you could go ahead and change this number down to like a 300 and it should be fine with the box shadow. So that looks okay. And still have this horizontal bar. It might be from one of these up here, but you get the point. You wanna make sure that the width of these things don't go outside the main container. So you could see as soon as I move the breakpoint, it's okay now. So just keep that in mind is always make sure that you're aware of how wide these things are on the different um, responsive modes up here. And underneath tablet, this should be fine. Everything is looking good right here. So let's go ahead, hit update, and let's just test these on the front end, make sure everything is working correctly. So we have this one where you pop up, that one's working correctly. This one does the pulse. And then what I like about this is the user could go ahead and actually like copy this. You know, just kind of a fun little way I was able to have the promo code come up. And then the contact form, let's just do a test. And let's just um, do a test and say test.com, test, make sure everything is working. Now you do notice that when you do have a contact form, it, you're not gonna the, the user's not gonna lose what they typed in, which is a very nice feature. So let's go ahead, hit send, and it should have the send message. So you can always change this text color in the contact form to something like black so you can see it. And that looks like it worked correctly. And that's it for this Elementor and Croco Block tutorial. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.